Mr. Heffernan here, and here's a uh, video on energy transformations. Here's just a little example here on the main screen. Here we got uh, the sun giving uh, solar radiation to the earth, where uh, trees use that to grow through photosynthesis, and then later someone may uh, burn the tree um, to cook their food. Okay, so the law of conservation of energy basically says that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed or transferred from one place to another. Even when the law appears to be broken, when mass is destroyed and thermal energy is created, the law is not really broken because mass is really just a form of nuclear potential energy, and that becomes thermal energy, so it's just a transfer. So here, just to give you a quick review of the law of conservation of energy, we have a thousand joules of initial energy. This is input into our system. And then uh, later, we get 900 joules of useful energy and a heat loss of like 100 joules. So they have to add up. So even though uh, we only have 900 joules left and 100 is gone into the environment, they still add up to the 1,000 that we started off with. So what goes in must come out, just like money. If you put $1,000 into the, into the economy and you only get $900 back on your investment, that means someone else made $100. So, energy transformation diagrams. So, these are diagrams which follow the flow of energy and how it transforms and transfers. These diagrams demonstrate the law of conservation of energy. So, for example, a person climbing some stairs. So, you could go all the way back to the sun if you want. So, the sun has nuclear potential energy. Inside the sun, there's going to be some nuclear fusion. And that is going to make uh, thermal energy, which will lead to kinetic radiation. So, radiation light's going to travel through space and hit the earth. Then, via photosynthesis, a chemical reaction, um, food is going to be grown on the earth somewhere and become chemical food energy. And then that person is going to eat the food and use cellular respiration, another chemical reaction, to, uh, to heat up their body and give their body energy. And then they're going to be able to run. They're going to have kinetic object energy, so they're going to be running. Meanwhile, people are only around maybe 25% efficient, so for every uh, joule of uh, kinetic energy we get, we give away quite a few joules to the environment. So we're going to heat up the air, heat's going to come off our body. All right, so this person runs up the stairs, we're going to transfer uh, that kinetic energy into gravitational potential, and in the meantime, they've got to push the air molecules out of the way. They're going to work the air, give thermal energy to the air. So there's uh, many, many different kinds of uh, energy transformations. I didn't even put them all in this diagram. You could, you could go on forever. Okay, here's another one. Uh, fireworks. Here's a parallel transformation diagram. So two transformation systems going on at the same time. So here we got a firework, uh, fireworks rocket in the earth, ready to go. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to have chemical potential energy. It's going to have its fuel. And it's also got some chemical energy, which is explosive, some explosive energy. So now, first of all, the chemical energy is going to um, be released through combustion. So we're going to have a flame, which is going to have some thrust coming out of the back of the rocket. And uh, so now the rocket has kinetic energy. So the chemical energy has been transformed into kinetic energy. And uh, some of this kinetic energy is going to be used to push the air out of the way. So you're going to have uh, air molecules pushed out of the way. That's going to be thermal energy in the air. And if they're pushed away uh, very strongly, they'll actually make some sound waves, which uh, will have the whistling sound as the uh, rocket flies through the air. And eventually it's going to get the altitude that you're looking for, so it's going to have gravitational energy. And then the explosive. Well, the explosive is going to wait until uh, the rocket is at the right altitude. And then there's going to be an explosion reaction, and that's going to release a lot of kinetic thermal energy. And that is going to cause kinetic sound energy. We're going to get a boom, uh, kinetic radiation. You're going to see the light show. And uh, even if you didn't hear the sound wave or see the lights, but you're nearby, you may feel the shock wave, the uh, vibration coming off the, uh, off the explosion. So um, once again, I didn't put all the energies that I could put into the diagram. Usually in a course, you only need to have about four or five bubbles or, or, or blocks in your diagram. Okay, so in summary, the law of conservation of energy is the uh, the total amount of energy input into a system is equal to the total amount of output from the system, including the energy loss is heat to the environment. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed. 
And an energy transformation diagram is a diagram that follows the energy transformations as, um, as energy flows through the system. And there you go. And here's a couple more pictures you can look at uh, right here. Sun making uh, wheat, wheat uh, being used as bread, and then uh, a person off on their bicycle and also providing heat to the environment. And then here's another one of um, what it takes to hammer a nail. So there you go. So hope this helps.